hello everyone and welcome to our second webinar. This is session two of five of our World of Royalties webinar series where we'll be going in depth on streaming royalties. If you missed our last webinar, you will find it um, on our landing page for webinars and it's likely in your email. So go ahead and check that out. And if you can't make the entire webinar today, it will be available for download after. Um, and so will all the upcoming webinars. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, we have a team of members monitoring. So if you feel free to use the chat box to ask questions throughout. We'll try to answer those um, questions during the webinar, but if we're not able to get to them, we'll follow up at the end or follow up with you individually afterwards. A replay will be available as stated um, with resources. You'll receive a link and an email if you'd like to rewatch anytime. And all of the sessions will be available on that page after they happen. So it's nice to meet you. I'm Elizabeth. And today we're joined by a very special guest, Kyle, who is our Associate Director of Publishing Operations. Hi, everyone. Um, I oversee ops and help with a lot of the international um, operational strategy and growth for the company, and uh, glad to be here. We'll be excited to take advantage of all Kyle knows about streaming royalties today. And let's get started. So here's what we hope you take away today. Um, we're gonna go over just a general overview of streaming royalties, and these are the topics that will be covered. We hope you have a better understanding of what streaming royalties are, um, break down the types of streaming royalties, know where they come from and who they are paid to, have a deeper understanding of what or how these are calculated across the music industry and the world, and just go away with a few tips to help increase your streaming performance. Okay, so we're starting with a quick poll. You'll see it pop up in your chat box that you can pull out to the right of your screen, the three little dots on the button. Who here has their music on a streaming platform? And as we're moving forward, if you don't yet have your music on a streaming platform, we'll be talking about um, who you would work with to do that. So providing some context, here's a reminder. Music publishing in its purest form refers to the money you can make as the copyright holder of the music you write. So the money that you earn from your music are called royalties. As soon as you write a song, as soon as it's in a fixed form, you inherit these rights by law, these rights to user songs in multiple ways. So once you finish a song, you use these rights to share your music with the world across the marketplace. And as it's shared and however it is shared, you earn royalties. And there are different types of royalties. Today we're talking about streaming royalties specifically. So an original song has two parts. As you can see, there is the composition and the master recording. So there's the song you could have written down on paper to play on your piano, and then there is a recording or maybe multiple recordings. The composition is handled by the publishing sphere of the music industry. So publishing includes songwriters, it includes publishers, and what are called PROs and CMOs. Again, this is an overview of um, our prior webinar. So just to continue the overview, the master recording is managed by the label and, the, and or the distributor. And the master recording earns two types of royalties. So they distribute royalties to artists normally and labels um, and distributors. That's divided into master recording royalties, which are also called mechanical royalties, and neighboring rights um, with organizations such as SoundExchange. 
So we're going to move on to focus on the composition side because we are working in publishing and we're finding more about streaming royalties and the two types of streaming royalties that we receive are performance royalties and mechanical royalties. Performance royalties are traditionally paid out by a PRO and or depending on the territory you're in, a CMO. So a performing rights organization or a collection management organization. And these are paid out into two shares. They're called the writer share and the publisher share. Mechanical royalties are paid out by a mechanical collection society and or a CMO again. And these are traditionally delivered only to a publisher. Um, in some territories, they're delivered to both writer and publisher. Um, but in this description, we're seeing that it's only delivered to the publisher share. Um, and the publisher share is what SongTrust helps writers collect and helps publishers collect. So there are several types of royalties that we collect in the publishing world. These are performance royalties, mechanical royalties, and micro-sync royalties. Again, this is for any use of your music. So the specific kinds of uses are in specific kinds of royalties. When your song is publicly performed, so when it is publicly used, it could be online or in person, in a restaurant, um, on your streaming service, on your phone, at a live performance, on an interactive radio uh, platform such as Pandora, you earn performance royalties. Um, radio can be a confusing topic for some, but the Pandora that we are speaking about are um, the paid Pandora users specifically. Mechanical royalties are earned when your song is digitally streamed or physically reproduced. So think of your recording being used um, in physical or digital form, in CD, vinyl, or digital download, streamed on demand with services such as Spotify, which is what we are talking about today. And finally, micro sync royalties, which are earned from the use of your music in videos. So synchronization with media and music, often we see royalties coming from YouTube. And we do have a YouTube webinar coming up, um, our next webinar that's coming up. So stay tuned for that. Um, save your YouTube questions for that webinar. So the reason Kyle is here is because we're going to go over streaming royalties and um, he's going to tell you more about those and we'll all chime in with questions and learn together. Um, great. So, you know, we kind of touched on the basic of all royalties really and where they're coming from. You know, to be very specific in streaming, um, historically we couldn't fit streaming in a box. Um, you know, copyright didn't account for it. Sometimes you hear people call it streaming royalties or digital royalties. And, you know, what does that all mean? Um, um, sorry, technical difference. Don't know how much you had there. So streaming royalties, um, you know, used to really didn't start with within copyright. You know, they didn't know how to. Uh, describe it or who should be paid or how to, um, you know, who to pay out and, and how to clarify it. Uh, so what they ended up doing um, is fitting it into the context that already existed. So we already had a concept of performance royalties, um, as mentioned before, often are from, from radio and from performance of things on television and, and film, um, and also the concept of mechanicals, which had a very um, set rate when discussing physical and digital downloads, um, which would consider the statutory rate, um, which was set by legislation. Um, so fitting that in with streaming, you a streaming rate will pay out both uh, in, to their respective um, collection societies. Um, I think if we want to move to the next slide. Um, so how do they get paid out? Who collects on them? And where does SongTrust and other publishers um, come into play? Um, so the performance side of a stream 
makes up half of the composition side, so the publisher side. Um, and those are often being paid to your PROs, ASCAP, BMI, PRS, uh, so on and so forth, here in the US, uh, because we do have um, the concept of mechanical societies that operate separate of the PROs, uh, the mechanical share is getting paid to HFA. Um, so from a single stream, um, you know, it's being split up and paid to, to multiple different parties who then are paying it out to those who are connected to them. Um, a writer and a publisher will collect the, perform, uh, the performance side from a PRO. Um, and oftentimes, a publisher in the U.S. are the only ones able to get things, uh, get the mechanical side from someone like Harry Fox or Music Reports. Um, and then that publisher is being paying that down to the to the writers, and um, yeah, you know. So what goes in? to generating this streaming royalty. There really isn't a set rate. You know, there is no nine cents for a mechanical like there would be with physical. Um, so what's, you know, generating um, ultimately the numbers that you're probably used to seeing if you ever try to, to show this. Um, you know, so if you're looking at Spotify um, in interactive streaming, so Spotify, Apple, you know, something that you you have control over the, the streaming that you're doing. Um, you know, it's subject to how many subscribers, what the service is. Um, you know, are you listening? Uh, listening rate, uh, premium, subscribers, premium, um, all play a huge impact on what the total rate that's going to ultimately become, um, something that's going to get paid out. Um, and it can get very confusing very fast. Um, and we'll hopefully have a slide showing later that will really break it down. Good question. Um, the slide says that the rates are set by the government. And I'm curious how they may differ across platforms, because I'm guessing that they're not the same for every single DSP or digital service provider. Um, so the rate that is really being set is the amount that's being paid out by a service. Um, so it's not, uh, you know, it's, it, it's dependent whether it's non-interactive or interactive and how much they're required to pay out of revenue and, and things of like that. You know, it's not necessarily the same as a physical mechanical that has a very clear um, statutory rate. Um, so it still can, you know, fluctuate depending on all the things we just talked about. Um, you know, it might not be, you can't just sit and expect that you're going to now make one cent per stream or, you know, a hundredth of a cent per stream. Um, there's still many factors and uh, depending on um, the service, there could be more factors than others. Uh, YouTube, for example, um, Pandora, Sirius are different than Apple and Spotify. Um, so it is a constantly evolving market and constantly changing. And um, some of that has only recently changed and, and been modified by the MMA, which hopefully we'll drill down and talk about in, in later webinars and things. Yeah. And then another quick question. So the DSPs that you listed, such as YouTube and Pandora and Spotify and Apple Music, which ones of these DSPs provide interactive and or non-interactive streaming? So non-interactive is, is usually your Pandora and, uh, Pandora and Sirius radio um, and others like that, where you know you're, it's more of that a little bit of that digital traditional radio feel, um, not as much control over what you're streaming. Um, and Spotify and Apple and, you know, services like that, where it is a little more interactive, you have a little more control over what it is you're digesting, um, you know, is, is interactive. Um, and, and yeah, the streaming rates are very dependent on the differences between those two, um, often um, higher. Interactive. So this is a very interesting slide. Um, these numbers are probably the numbers you're used to seeing when trying to do research in this realm. As many of you probably know, it's hard to find the numbers that are very concrete. Um, 
the thing that's very important about these numbers is that this is showing the entire stream. Um, and I know from our perspective, we often get uh, people that come in um, using these numbers, expecting that that's the money they're going to receive from us or from a PRO um, when it's not necessarily true um, because there's many factors. Um, there's a third one that Elizabeth touched on briefly in the beginning, and, and that is the master side and the re recording side of a stream. Um, so while on the composition side, on the publishing side, a stream is broken up into two parts, um, there is a third part. Um, so this number is re reflective of the whole pie that gets uh, split up oftentimes three times um, and is being paid um, to multiple sources. So. A really good example would be a stream from uh, Pandora um, would go to um, would go to your a non-interactive stream would go to your PRO and would go to someone like Sound Exchange, um, whereas Spotify it would go to your PRO, um, go to someone like Harry Fox and go through your distribution and sale or a label, um, you know. So that stream that might be paid, paid by your publisher. Um, you know, could look like very much a fraction of these numbers. And it's really important to know that. So we, we are talking micro pennies per stream, um, but this is, these are the rates that we're working with now. And there's actually a landscape that's changing that we can talk about later. But I just wanted to be clear. So the, the master recording, the percentage that's paid out by the DSP, um, there's only one payment to the master recording. And then there's another payment to the composition from the DSP. And the payment for the composition can be broken down potentially three ways. Okay, that's, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah it can be, you know, it's that one, that one stream is getting, you know, broken up and just connecting them all back to one another becomes infinitely difficult. Um, you know, many of you are probably aware on the distribution side, uh, payments are often happening on a monthly basis. On the publishing side, it's usually quarterly. Um, YouTube pays monthly. Um, so when you're trying to connect these individual streams to one another to really, you know, uh, be sure that you're getting paid that whole stream, it can be very difficult. Um, and, you know, I think it's kind of important as generally to say, and we get it a lot of, you know, being very disappointed by some of these numbers. Um, you know, YouTube can often be, um, you know, kind of slam for paying such a small rate. Um, but you're digesting so much music there. These videos are being played so many times that um, most of the, a lot of the revenue that's coming into the industry now is, is coming from streaming. It is very much solidified itself as, a, as something that we're using on a daily basis and continuing to grow. And, and uh, I think we're seeing, especially within our own system, songwriters making, um, you know, legitimate, money from these, uh, from this as a revenue source. Um, and just the last bit, um, you said that these streaming rates are not static and they're not exact because it takes several different parties to even um, analyze and compute these numbers. So I'm guessing these numbers change and that we're going to probably see other numbers online if we research streaming rates. Yeah, it's a very good point. It's um, many numbers that you'll find are usually being um, through various analytics by individual companies or by an industry as a whole. And, um, you know, I think the numbers when you find month by month, year over year, um, regardless of what company is, is trying to, to do it and promote those, um, are really going to come up with numbers that are similar. But um, they're constantly changing. It's hard to ever say that this is the number you should use. Um, to figure out how your money is going to be, um, something we, you know, to touch on um, briefly. For um, we often get people that try to we often try to get people uh, to see what they're what they're going to get, and they use a number like this that is very static, um, and in, it's not the full picture. Uh, depending on all of those things that we talked about, that could impact a royalty. And a good example to kind of leave you on is uh, if you're a premium, if you, all of your streams come from premium usage on Spotify, uh, the amount of money could be more like this number where, that you're seeing, um, whereas if you're getting it all from a freemium account, 
it could be a fraction of this. Um, so even using these as very general numbers, you know, is, is very difficult. Um, you should really be thinking about it as a range. Uh, for me, premium for Spotify could be, you know, close to the 0 0.003 you're seeing, uh, but freemium could be 0 0.009 or eight to, to even start with. Um, and then it's breaking down there. So yeah, it's, I hate to say not to try to focus on what you should expect because it's good to do those things, but um, it is very difficult as it's a, a constantly changing landscape. Um, and, and yeah, so the best you can do is um, make sure that you're out there and being eligible to make it, which Elizabeth is hopefully gonna talk about a little bit right now. Happy to do so. So part of our job is also empowering you um, to access the free online resources that are here um, to complete the full picture Kyle was talking about and to optimize the performance of your music, especially in the digital realm. So we're driving home the idea, the visual idea that in order to ultimately be successful, you have to utilize the various aspects of the music industry. So there's distribution on a global scale. If you work with a distributor like CD Baby or DistroKid, your music is being distributed globally. Second, streaming. Let's face it, we are in a streaming era. So if your music isn't on every channel available, you're missing out. Performances. If you're a performing artist, we're you know, encouraging you to get out and into book gigs and to um, join other performers and to book shows together and you earn royalties from submitting live set lists. Last, we're looking at marketing. You have to be your own advocate and market yourself to fans by telling your own story in your own voice to grow a fan base and find evangelists to push your music and brand. None of this is easy, <laughs> um, but none of this is as easy as, you know, finishing a song and collecting the money. So do the work and all of these efforts will pay off. Continuing this, making the most of your streams. Um, as many of you know, we are in publishing, so we are not in the distribution game. So we cannot give you artist advice or tell you what to do to make it big, but we can share what we've learned to advise you on how to make the most of your streams. Some of these things include getting verified. If you can, if you're on Spotify or Apple Music, you can get your account verified. So you establish a more professional look you have that nice blue check mark, um, similar to on Instagram, you're, you're verified, you're pro. Playlists, you can engage with other playlist owners and curators to get your music onto as many playlists as you can. Don't forget to ask your distributor to pitch your songs to the New Music Friday playlists and share any other relevant ones in your country. And of course, share, share your playlist as often as possible, link your music, um, to your Instagram story. Direct traffic. You can refer to people to your streaming profiles any chance you get. You can share straight through the app to make the experience or listening to or getting to your music is much smoother. Um, one of my favorite things that people do is write an actual bio on their Spotify page or they put their next show date um, or they put their handle, their social handle. So if I find them on a Spotify playlist, I can go to their about page and I can see where to find them on Instagram or Twitter. Um, fans, not to be missed, collect with fans on social media to keep fans updated and when you're playing and where to watch your videos or listen to your music. Communication is very important. And as long as you keep a, a channel open of communication with your fans um, and you keep the conversation going, it will be to your benefit. Advocate, be your own advocate, and get your face in front of more people. You are your own marketer, so if you're not talking about your music, then why should anyone else? Um, talking about your music, not necessarily talking about yourself, but talking about your music, the process, um, and the journey behind it. So get creative. You can do covers, um, which are, you know, renditions of other songs that some people may know or not. Recording or posting a cover of a well-known song can help boost sales as listeners often choose more than one ver version of a song to listen to at one time. 
collaborate with other artists that may have already had a big following so your music also shows up when they search your collaborator. Now we're doing a quick poll here and we're asking what your current publishing situation is. Also, we are in New York City and there are live horns that are contributing to our arrangement of this webinar right now. So Song Trust, um, we are a global publishing administration platform. So we've designed proprietary technology to provide you with a platform where you can control your own publishing by adding your own songs to your account and having a system where you can register them on a global scale. And in this way, you can function as a business person in the capacity of a publisher, register your songs as a publisher, and collect royalties that are traditionally owed to a publisher, even if you don't have a publishing company. Who do we do this for? We do this for a lot of people around the world, and we're constantly growing. So we're keeping our conversation open to songwriters, to music publishers, to labels and managers. Um, and as we continue to grow, we continue to learn more about how the music industry around the world and how to best serve the needs of all those individuals. Just a quick overview of our terms. You can find this in the, in the deck in the email you get where you can download this webinar. Um, we're a very flexible DIY online solution for publishing. We help you collect all of your publishing royalties from the publisher share to the songwriter share. And the cost of signing up is a simple flat fee and a commission on only the publisher share. Very important note, my favorite part, we have this royalty estimator on our website. So if you actually go to songtrust.com and type in your song, as long as you have over 10,000 streams in the US or Canada, you can type in your song and select it um, from the Spotify platform. And so what we're looking at is the title of your song or artist name, and we're searching some data and we're helping provide you a super conservative estimate of what you would be owed in streaming royalties. So a quick offer for us is to actually estimate your royalties today. So if you submit your music on songtrust.com, search your artist name or title, um, or you can search in the chat box. We're providing the link there. We will be happy to help you estimate your potential streaming earnings as long as you meet the threshold of 10,000 streams in the US or Canada. All right, so we're gonna go over a few questions that anyone has as we wrap up here. Um. Um, great, yeah, so there's a few that came through the chat box that I thought were um, good to potentially get out of the way. Um, someone asked about Merlin. Um, Merlin is a service, um, especially in the UK and the Netherlands, who do licensing on the record side um, for artists, for distribution companies, for labels. Um, they are important to work with. If you use a distribution service or a label, especially in that territory, it's uh, quite certain that they're involved in, in some way. Um, so that was one. Um, you know, the how the Music Modernization Act impacts streaming is um, a potentially lengthy topic. Um, but how it impacts rates and more importantly, how it impacts publishing in a very general sense um, is it kind of uh, brings the two worlds a little closer together as far as value is concerned. So that the record side and the publishing side. Um, the record side was, it was more of like a 70-30, 65-35 kind of split on where the revenue from these services were, was being pointed to. Um, and in, in many parts of the MMA, which will impact many parts of the industry, um, that one is just kind of um, the services will pay more to the publishers moving forward, which is, is really great for this industry and um, ultimately bringing the two um, a little more to an equal place in the, in the field. Um, someone asked if they need 
HFA or Harry Fox. Um, Harry Fox is a little difficult to work with as an individual songwriter. Um, they often require that you have your own publishing entity or have your own publisher. Um, and because of that, it, it is a little difficult. But yes, um, you know, the most common one is they are the data aggregator for Spotify. Uh, if you do not have a connection with Harry Fox, uh, you are leaving a portion of your streaming royalties um, on the table from someone like Spotify. Um, so if you can't get with them directly, um, it's important that you have a publisher, um, use someone like a song trust uh, to connect those dots for you uh, because it's your money. Um, Music Reports is a competitor to Harry Fox. Um, that is kind of the same concept. They're a little easier to work with as an individual songwriter, um, and they represent people like Pandora. Um, so, you know, having, having both is, is really pivotal, as well as having a PRO and, and all that. Um, um, someone mentioned something about writer rates, um, and it, it's a good point. Um, so to make it even more complicated, um, when your PRO pays out, uh, they're part of a streaming royalty or any performance royalties. Um, it is split between a publisher share and a writer share. Um, so if you have a publisher, you are probably seeing payments from your PRO and from your publisher. Um, and the PRO one is your writer share and the share coming from your publisher is your publisher share. Um, to touch on uh, briefly international um, licensing and streaming, uh, it is slightly different in, than in the U.S. Um, there isn't really a concept of PROs and mechanical societies that are split. Uh, they often consider themselves CMOs or a PRO and a, the mechanical side are under the same kind of umbrella. Um, and those streams are being paid out um, often at, at one time. Um, there's also some concepts of licensing services that you might hear, uh, hear of if you're not in the U.S., such as um, ICE or Impel, um, Apropal in Australia. Um, they do licensing for both the performance and mechanical side of streaming um, in one go and pay it out at one time, um, trying to simplify this kind of crazy world that has come from, from the streaming and how it's broken out. Um, Question we got is, does Song Trust work with music reports? And absolutely. Um, we are constantly sending data to them and collecting um, from them here in the US, um, as they are the main aggregator for Pandora and uh, many other services as well. Um, do you have uh, just a few questions for you, Kyle, before we wrap up. Um, so what if I upload, I know that Spotify has this new artist favored feature. What if I upload my music directly to Spotify? Does that change how they pay me or how much they pay me as an artist? Uh, very good question. Um, it's, you know, it's very interesting to see how Spotify and some of these other services are really going to want to own that user experience. Um, and Spotify does come out and is very clear about that. If you upload music to them directly that they can pay you, um, you know, pay you directly. Um, and that's true on the recording side. It is still not true on, on the publishing side. Uh, so the publishing royalties, even if you do upload directly to Spotify, are still going through a very traditional flow. They're going to your PRO. They're going to someone like Harry Fox, um, being paid potentially to directly to a publisher, uh, so on and so forth. So while it does change the landscape a little bit from a distribution side, from a master side, um, the publishing side for now remains the same. So as you describe, it's, it's quite a lot of work to try to collect your royalties from all of these sources. And there are several shares that come from all of these sources. So is it actually possible to collect all of your royalties as a songwriter this day and age with streaming music? By yourself, um, it's extraordinarily difficult, if if not borderline impossible. I hate to ever say anything is impossible. Um, as an individual, um, it's very difficult to connect to a global network as an individual songwriter. Um, you know, you are often affiliated to your PRO, and they have 
this concept of reciprocal deals that it could be a whole webinar in itself um, that is trying to connect you to performance royalties around the world. Um, mechanical societies in the US operate differently internationally in some of these digital licensing services that have prop, uh, popped up all over the world. Um, it just, it's very complicated, um, you know, and, and having a publishing admin involved, you know, something that Song Trust has really prided itself on is, is developing that global network, uh, working with all the PROs and, and being direct so that we can submit data to them directly and collect directly, um, has taken us as a company a long time and, you know, we're still, still growing. Um, but it shouldn't be thought that you can do it kind of alone. It is, it's tough out there. Um, and there's so many, um, and it's constantly changing, right? So it's, it's streaming is complicated, but there's so much more to it as well. So it's, um, it's difficult, but you know, with the right partners and people involved, um, we've seen a lot of success. In it. Very awesome. So we have time for one more question. If you're a small independent label who owns masters, when paying out the 9.1 cent, should you pay to the writers and the producers directly? Um, yeah, so if you're the one uh, distributing the music, if you're the label, um, or if you're using a distributor but you're still required to be the one to pay out the mechanical, um, it's your uh, responsibility to pay the correct rights holder. So that can be, it could be the writer, it could be the producer, it could be the artist, um, but it could also be um, the publisher involved. Um, so, you know, it's, if you use someone like CD Baby as your distribution um, or another kind of independent DIY service, um, you know, they do push that back on as well. So yeah, it, you know, what you're bringing in from sales it's important to note that, you know, whatever that 9.1 cent ultimately multiplies up to based on um, sales and, and things, uh, it's important that you connect it to the right people that are involved, um, individual songwriters, individual publishers, uh, so on and so forth. 